Ah, I'm so happy to be here today. But Jen, you always say you're happy to be there, but it's true. I'm so happy to be here. Okay, I'm gonna double up on my band. I'm gonna do a couple of stretches today. I'm just standing tall. My arms come up with the band and I lightly pull it apart and I push the band up as tall as I can, as high as I can. So I can kind of feel my rib cage lifting up and I take a huge inhale, as big as I can. Good, and then a deep exhale. Good. Now I'm gonna move straight into side bending today. So I reach up and out of myself and that's an inhale. As I exhale, I come back to center and maybe my shoulders settle a bit. Inhale, up and out. Exhale, back. Good, I'm gonna take these a little slow today. It's one breath per movement. Inhale, side. Exhale, center. Good. Ah, I feel so happy to be side bending. Inhaling up and over. Exhaling back to center. Good, now this next one, I'm gonna take it into the side bend, but I'm gonna add my outside leg. So I come into C star in my extreme side bend. So it's a little shaky, it's a little work. And then back to center. Inhale, reach and stretch. Outside leg lifts up, and I find C star, and I come back to center. Reaching up and over, and center. Inhale, reach. Good, really find it, like it's your maximum up and your maximum out. Maximum up and out. Good. And as I continue with the side bending to C star movement, I'm feeling activation. Yes, I'm getting activated in a really good way, in an energizing interior way. Woo. Good, I'm gonna do one more each way. Inhaling, side bend to C star. Exhale through center. Inhale, side bend to C star and back to center. Good, now my arms come all the way down. Ooh, that feels good. And then they go straight back up. Good. From here, my hands are a little bit behind my head and I've got a high V shape, so I'm pulling my band apart. I'm gonna slide my hands behind my head. This is called shape the head and then back up. I'm gonna do it just two more times. This is an exercise we do seated on the reformer. Shave the head. Good. This is a little different version of it. <laughs> Good. One more time if you can. To me, this is a stretch. Excellent. Good, now we're gonna do a full roll down and I'm keeping my band pulled apart. So I'm activating those inner muscles. Take a breath in, coming forward, coming to my hang. Maybe this is my first hang of the day and I really have to let go. <sighs> Making sure I let go of my head, checking out how my back feels. Maybe breathing into my low back, sending oxygen there. Can you feel movement if you breathe into your low back? And then as you exhale, just coming up, feet, knees, hips, spine. Good work. And I want to take a little bit of a back bend. So I'm going to hold my TheraBand singly with an underhand grip, and I pull it lightly apart. And then I'm just gonna lift my chest up, and I'm gonna look up at the sky. And it's a very small standing back bend. I'm very lightly pulling my band apart. And if I'm tight in any place in my upper chest, I'll feel this as a light stretch. 
So standing back bend, and then differentiating that from neutral. So my head comes down, my ribs come together, and now I'm standing tall, good. I'm gonna flare my feet out to a V shape, and I'm gonna zip up from my heels to my pubic bone. And then from here, I move into my tiny little pulls. As you know, the elbows stay close into the sides. A visual that gets you in the right position for this one is that you have two fluffy pillows under your armpits, and you don't want them to fall out. So you're squeezing the pillows, and then it's pull, resist, pull, resist, pull, resist. Good, any pace. I'm taking a little bit of a slower pace today. Good, yes, good. Now, just for my feet working, I'm gonna keep this exact cadence as much as I can, and I'm gonna lift my heels off the ground, and I'm gonna lower down. I changed my cadence, oh well, that's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna pull and lift and in and down. Cha-cha, that makes sense. Good, now I'm starting to feel a little bit of something around my shoulders. Yes, we want to keep our shoulders very strong. Good, and for me, because I was sitting on my butt for five and a half hours yesterday driving here from Mount Shasta, I feel it in my glutes a little bit too today, which is good, good feeling. Good, now I'm gonna stay lifted. If I can, I've got my heels together, but my heels are off the ground. My belly muscles are pulling in, and then it's small for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and release it. Good. I take an overhand grip. My arms come up to the sky. I pull apart. So I'm not wildly out there. It's contained. There's a containment field around my arms. From this position, I want to take a slight standing back bend. So I lift my eye gate and my sternum up to the ceiling, and then I widen my band. So I'm really feeling something, because my band is wide, and then I pull it to my breastbone with resistance. Good, this is the standing lat pull. So we have to really feel and each nuance of this movement. You can imagine that you're at the gym and you're seated on a, a lat bench, the lat machine, if you're familiar with that, and you're pulling down. Good, and you're feeling deep armpit and upper sides of the body as you resist. Good, I want five more. These should be pretty challenging if you're doing them with all of the correct muscles. The main thing is resisting. Resist. Reach up as you resist. Pull down as you resist. Good, let's do three more. Lat pulls, sides of the body. Good. And one more. Nice. Good, now let's uh, let the arms come fairly wide and there's a little bit of slack in my band. I'm gonna keep my feet in my V shape so I can keep my inner thighs squeezed together and I'm just gonna pull across all the way today so that means my arms are going a little bit to the back. I'm taking this as a stretch, not necessarily as a maximum strengthener today. Let's all the way as much as I can, a little pause and then back. Good. If you feel any tingling in your upper arms or lower arms, anywhere around your arms, <laughs> you will feel a nerve stretch. That little tingling is a good sign. Okay, and then hold it, 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 hold it. Good. Bring it back and arms come down, shoulders up and down, up and down, fast, 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 fast. Just release any tension here, shrugging those shoulders. Excellent, good, I've got two more things today for TheraBand arms. Let's stand on our band, and if you've got the purple band, this is a really good strength. I'm gonna keep my V shape. I'm holding on to the very edges, and I want you to externally rotate, yep. Squeeze the inner thighs, draw ribs together. We're gonna take it all the way up for bicep curl and just pause for a second. Stand tall, 
nice long lean neck, shoulder blades pulling down your back. Resist, pulling up, resisting down. Good, if you do not have your band handy, you can use small weights for this. I get so much more out of it. If I'm really thinking about it with the TheraBand, I've got every bone, every muscle, every ligament, every part of my body is working, not just the biceps. So for me, it's very handy. And Jill, I'm hope, hoping you like your new TheraBand. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not new, it's a used one, but I do have a couple of extra TheraBands if people live nearby and need some. Okay, so I'm gonna do just a couple more. I get a lot out of this exercise. Good, and then I like to do a few singles. So it's one down and one up. And really the thing is, can you keep standing exactly straight? Yeah, good. Let's keep going, alternate, alternate, alternate. Ooh, my arms feel stronger already. Good, and maybe you're aware of your upper back and how much upper back you are getting in this exercise series. I am. Yeah, it feels good. Good. Ah, ah. Okay, and then let's see if we can do doubles just to finish off. I'm really feeling these now, and I'm gonna see if I can do seven, ta -ta, and six, and five, and four, and three, and two, and last one. Woo, that was great. Okay, last thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna do some jump ropes with our band. No, just kidding about that. <laughs> that was fun though. I want to, um, I wanna do our tricep pulls. So I'm gonna start with my right hand wrapped around the band, and I'm dropping my band behind my back. And I'm walking my other hand up, maybe to touch the other hand. And I need a stretch. Gotta start with this one with a stretch. So my elbow is pointed to the sky. My armpit is fully opened. So if I needed to shave my armpits right now, this would be a great positioning. <laughs> now extend up and down. Good, pressing up and down. Be aware of your wrist. You're not having your wrist in a bent position. No, no, no. You're like a statue for human rights. <sighs> Super strong wrist. Like you're making a fist. Yeah, good. And then just keep going for as much as you can. For me, what really helps here, weirdly, is to squeeze my glutes. So my inner thighs are together and I'm squeezing my glutes and that gives me more strength to keep on going for these tricep presses. Weird, huh? Yeah. Must be some connection between triceps and glutes. Oh yeah. And press. Good, I'm gonna see if I can do about 10 more. So my idea is to do about 22. Oh, but I'm starting to feel them already. So I'm gonna keep going a few more. <sighs> Good. You're listening to your own body. A little bit of burning in your tricep is fantastic. Any strain in your neck muscles or your body just tells you that's enough. That's when you take a little break. You don't need to keep up with your neighbor. You need to keep up with yourself. <laughs> okay, here's my last two. And last one for me. Good, so I end it strong. I get a little bit of a stretch. I'm really pulling, pulling down and up, opening up that tricep. And for me, it feels great. Feels like I really need this for some reason, the stretch. And then carefully, I release it. Ah, good. Sometimes when we do our legs, we pay attention to one leg and the other leg. How does this arm that you just worked compare to the one that you didn't work? Different, huh? I know, I don't think I ever really noticed that before. Different. Good, this one feels better than one I just worked. Okay, left hand wraps around. I drop it behind me. 
I grab as high up as I possibly can, maybe my fingers touch, and then I open, open, open. This side's a little bit tighter today for me for whatever reason, but my elbow's facing up to the sky. I've got a V shape here with my feet standing tall. Good. Then fully extend and bend. Good. I try to find that really good form. I check out my wrist strength. I'm making a strong fist. Yes. Good work. Keep going down and press it up. Nice work. So yesterday we got to hike in Castle Craig State Park and we took a non-trail, which was in the Castle Craig's wilderness. I think there's quite a bit of climbing that goes on there because there are huge boulders and huge crags, which are giant slabs of granite, all jaggedy. And I think the trails that we found were uh, like uh, climber trails. You know, they were little tiny trails, but you could kind of follow them. And we followed a creek and there was running waters and waterfalls and little swimming holes. There was so much water up there. It's really beautiful and crazy and it makes you feel so happy when you're around water. I've been to a lot of dry spots lately. And uh, have you noticed how dry your own garden is lately? No. Yesterday they got a little rain in the Bay Area and a little rain up in Mount Shasta, but like three hours maybe of drizzle. Okay, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm suffering a bit. Anyone with me? <laughs> yeah, I'll feel this. <sighs> Good. So if I can, I got five in me and four in me, but I'm not forcing it. And three. And two, and there's my last one. And strong, good. Take it into a stretch if you need that. And we did it. Ah, good, TheraBand work is helpful. I'm gonna put my band down. I'm gonna do a really uh, quick stretch for my fingers and hands, and then we'll come to the mat. So for me, I'm gonna start with my hands coming in, and then out, like I'm a little magician and I'm making the, a rabbit disappear from the top hat. Cha cha, abracadabra. So each of those fingers comes in smoothly, make a little fist and then it goes out smoothly. Good, in smoothly and out smoothly. Good, this time I'm gonna pause. Good, I'm gonna make a little fist and then I'm going to turn my hands out so the palms are facing out, and I'm gonna make a big, huge hand, like jazz hands. Yeah, and then I'm gonna reach those back as if I'm doing a back bend. Yep, really lifting up as if I'm reaching and doing a back bend. I'm gonna grab the hands, press them together. Good. And then slowly up, and I'm keeping them pressed together and down. And I'm just gonna do that one more time. I'm pressing the hands together and it's up and down. And then again, this one is a nerve stretch and a light stretch for the, uh, for the hands. I release, press all the way out. Good, and it's as if here I'm holding open the elevator doors there's somebody coming and I'm holding open those elevator doors. Yes, then the hands go down and then elevator door up. Hands go down, elevator door up. Once more, down and up. Good, I'm gonna clasp the hands, turn them inside out, pull apart. And my hands are right over my head. They're not up here, they're right over my head. And I just finish with this circle. So I'm actually stretching my wrist my elbow joint and my shoulder joint. Yes, just circling over the head a couple times. And the other one, this is so good for artists who use these limbs all the time, especially if they're standing doing their artwork. Right, Donna? Yes, right? Anna, yes. Ah, okay, good work. Woo. Do your hands feel a tiny bit tingly now? Like there's more blood flow in them? Yeah, me too. 
Okay, let's come to the mat. And we're gonna start out here with the ball and the TheraBand. Ball between your ankles, TheraBand around your feet. We're gonna start with our roll-ups. <laughs> Life is so good. Life is so good. Life is so good. Okay, the ball between my ankles, TheraBand around my feet. I'm gonna do a couple of stretchy rollbacks, a couple of bridges. So the next two exercises are for our spine. Sit up as tall as you possibly can, and then as you come down, you're creating space in your body, along your spinal column and between your spinal column. Your head comes down. Can you get your shoulders to be a tiny bit wider? Breath in, lift your head. Exhale, lift up as if you've got somebody pulling on the crown of your head. So you're going up, but you're also going forward. You want to create space as you come up and down. When you come all the way up, you're in forward fold. Feel that. And then come right back down with a tension on your backbone. Yeah. Oh, these feel great. Inhale, float head. Exhale, it's up. So you're creating length and space. Bowing towards your beautiful feet, giving them thanks for carrying you for however many years you've been walking. Many years for me. Thank you, feet. Good. Okay, now from here, I'm going to remove the band for right now. Ball for me is gonna go between those inner thighs. And we're gonna do a couple of, of roll back. So taking a breath in, exhale as you hold on to the back of your thighs and roll back to your hammock spot. Inhale, exhale, diving forward. Feel free to pull yourself up. Remembering these exercises are about creating space. Uh, I was explaining to my four-year-old grandson this weekend that the majority of stuff in the world is stuff that we can't see. So I was grabbing the air and I was saying, this, here, have this. And he's like, what is it? It's nothing. And I'm like, no, it's something. It's just we can't see it. <laughs> Only you can do that with a four-year-old and they're like so delighted. <laughs> ah, it's true though. There's so much we don't, we can't see, but it's here. Okay, this time I'm going to go all the way down very slowly. Great. And we're going to do a little experiment. Don't you love it when we do experiments? Yes, it's so much fun. So I'm wiggling a little bit, getting my spine long and my back as much as I can, heavy, relaxed against my mat. My arms are at my sides. I take a breath in here, and on the exhale, I'm gonna do a rolling bridge. So I tilt my pelvis and I roll the spine up, and I roll the spine down. My ball, I am squeezing it a lot. Not like as hard as I possibly can, but I'm squeezing it a lot up and down. I'm going to do this maybe six more times, rolling the bridge up, rolling the bridge down. I think about my tailbone and I think about my, my movable, like almost elastic backbone as I get to curl it up and curl it down. I'm definitely moving with my bones. It's my bones that lift me up and my bones that lower me down. And this exercise as well is all about creating space and um, agility and mobility. You're really feeling that. This bridge here is one of the best exercises in all of Pilates because we're using the back of the body and the bones in the body to move and we're creating a light stretch through the front of the body, which is different from almost everything that we do every day. Okay, so say that's the eighth one, and I'm just gonna pause. 
At the very top, I found my perfect Pilates bridge. You can find that for yourself. Remember, shoulder blades, hips, shins and knees are reaching away. And you're just gonna hold here for me, breathing. Ah, good, and you've got the ball. And so the experiment is that we do the first set with the ball, and we do the second set without the ball. So now you're just kind of noticing the effects of the exercise, noticing how it feels, squeezing the ball, noticing where the, um, you know, if your body's talking to you or if there are any special things that pop up. You're breathing, 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 and you could do tiny little squeezes of the ball if you get bored. <laughs> I get bored very easily. I need to always add new movements to my life. Good thing I'm a Pilates teacher, huh? Otherwise, I'd just be a crazy person moving in weird ways. <laughs> I'd be shunned by society. But this way, I can call myself a Pilates instructor, make a living, and people think it's cool. <laughs> oh, kind of true, though, really. Okay, good. Now, you feel it, you find it, you roll all the way down. Good. Full stop, meaning that legs come out, ball can go in the back of the neck, and you take a little bit of a stretch. We've been doing a lot of stretching today. I know, I know, I guess my body needs it. You probably do too. So it's side to side. Ah, that feels good. Okay, now the second set, we're gonna do without the ball. So I've got my ball placed away in a safe little spot that it doesn't roll away. And I pull my feet in. And again, I give myself permission to wiggle a little bit and drop my spine down. So I start exactly the same way and it's a pelvic tilt. And then I roll up and I roll down. Good. We're gonna do it about eight times, just like we did with the ball. And I just want you to notice, is it a little more challenging without the ball? For some of you, you're like, it's way more challenging without the ball. And for some of you, it's, uh, it's kind of the same, Jen, I'm not feeling a big difference. And for others, they're like, I want my ball. I really love the having the ball. But it is a little different. It's a little bit different. So I'm just kind of collecting the differences. Good, and you're working on your spine up. You're working on your spine down and you're going at your own pace. Okay, on the next one, we'll stay in our bridge. We roll up and we stay in the bridge. Shoulder blades are relaxed and spread. Pelvis and hip bones are lifted as high as you can. And for most of us, we're feeling energy coming out through the knee, right through the meniscus. Maybe for some of you, it's also through the front of your shin bone, kind of feeling the bone lengthening away. You're lifted, your glutes are fired, your back muscles are working and you're hanging out. Yeah. So you can do tiny little squeezes of an imaginary ball. <laughs> that doesn't quite work the same way. But for me, I, I've never done this um, one with the ball and one set without the ball before. And I really like the ball. <laughs> the ball is my friend. The ball kind of makes it a little tiny bit easier, but it also fires the interior of my body more. I'm not sure if it's harder or easier, but I think maybe for me, it's a little bit harder without the ball. Like the ball is kind of like a prop that makes it a little easier. So just noticing that. And then I stay here in this perfect position and I'm gonna move right into my, uh, my lift, my marching. So I'm gonna lift one leg up to perfect tabletop and I set that down to ball heel. And as I'm marching, it's challenging here to really do it well. My uh, upper body is completely stable, that's the goal. My arms are definitely helping me by lightly pressing into the mat. So it's one, ta-ta, and the other, 
ta -ta, marching from your bridge. Good, single leg work is super challenging. In this particular position, it feels very doable. But just being aware, oh yeah, there's a lot of core support and a lot of back support. Good, now for the next challenge, I just check on my bridge. I'm very strong. I'm gonna try doing a straight leg lift and lower from my bridge. It's challenging, I'm gonna try. For me, my right leg's gonna go first. I lift it up to marching position, which is tabletop, and then up to the sky. I have to keep my hips completely level, and then I lower it just to the angle of the other knee. I don't drop it down to the ground, that's a little too much. Flex up, point down. Working with precision, and I'm gonna see if I can do six more. And five. And four, and three, and two, last one. Good, I set that down. I find my bridge, softening shoulder blades, lifting pelvis, lengthening through the meniscus. Can I do the other side? I'll try. Left leg pops to tabletop. Hips are stable, leg lengthens, and I go down to the height of the other knee. Flex up, good. Good. I try to stay completely stable and yet relaxed in my upper body. Four, three, two, one. Good, leg comes down, arms come up to the sky. I slowly, I take a big, huge inhale, and then slowly on an exhale, come down one bone, and then the next, and then next, I'm trying as best as I can to be like a tube of toothpaste with my spine as I come all the way down. Good, my knees open, feet together, butterfly pose, and I release for a moment. <sighs> that was fun, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. Okay, so from here, let's move into a little bit of flexion. Let's do our single leg stretch and our double leg stretch. Bringing feet in. Good. Start with one leg into your chest and give it a really nice hug. Hug that leg. Other leg lengthens long. Squeeze the leg into your chest. Good. And then take it across the body. Oh, I'm adding a stretch. Yeah, I'm adding a little stretch. It feels good. <laughs> good. I'm pulling my, for me, I'm, this is my left leg. I'm pulling my left knee to my right armpit. That's what I'm kind of trying to pull it up and over. And I'm feeling the stretch mostly through my glutes. And it, to me, it feels great. Okay, then I bring it back to center. I'm using my clasped hands on my left shin to help me lift up in the correct position. It's always a circle. A circle from the crown of my head. Is that if I were a unicorn, I'd have a, a big horn right here. So from a unicorn horn to my kneecap, I lift up. <clears throat> there we go. I feel wonderful and I'm lifted up. I lift my right leg off the floor so it's hovering. And I just hold here for a second. I check my pelvis position is level. I check that the rest of my body is lifted, but it's relaxed. And then I change legs and I hold. And I'm clasping my hands. I'm pulling one leg into me. And that helps me stay lifted above my shoulder blades. So it's a version of our single leg stretch. Typical single leg stretch, it's a lot more about your upper body here. This I'm giving us a little extra lift, a little extra lift. So think about that unicorn form reaching up and over the kneecap. Lift and stretch, lift and stretch, nice. Okay, now if you're feeling it a little bit in your neck, which I am, a little bit's okay, but anything past that, not so good. I'm gonna bring my hands behind my head for support, and then I just get the legs moving. Becomes a little bit more core oriented. I'm gonna see if I can do 20 
19, good, and my feet are touching like a giant target. They are really punching buttons or punching a target. That's it. For 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, legs in, good. And then open the elbows, lengthen both legs. Bring everything in. Open both elbows and lengthen the legs. Bring everything in. Press it out. Pull everything in. Good. Now, when you extend your legs, drop your belly down as if your belly is a souffle that's fallen. Inhale, exhale. Oh. Inhale, exhale. Oh. Good. That's it. Set your feet down. Let your arms come down. And for supine twist, your legs could be up or your legs could be on the floor, feet on the floor or tabletop. But it's side. That's your inhale. Exhale, center. Inhale, side. What makes a supine twist is not the leg position. It's your eye position and your shoulder position. So my eyes are on the ceiling. I'm not doing a twist away. I'm staying stable with my head and my knees and my rib cage and my waist is moving. Good, you can do a couple more. You can put on the Beatles music, twist, like we did the twist, because it does feel like a really good twist. Twist and shout. Okay, yes. Now from here, you're gonna rock your body all the way up. And we're gonna flip on over. We're gonna do just a couple uh, exercises here from quadruped. Ah, so I'm sitting on my feet. And to me today, I'm feeling a little bit of a uh, stretch in the thigh. That to me is helpful. I'm breathing, ha, ah, good. And then I find a place to come into comfortable quadruped. For many people, you need a little bit of a um, ramp for your wrists. So taking care of yourself and then finding yourself as your favorite four-legged animal. Maybe that's a cat, a dog, maybe it's a lion. You're an animal. Pull your belly in, make your back as straight as possible, great. And then we're gonna practice just with one limb lifting at a time while keeping our back straight. Let's start with our right leg. Right leg is going to lengthen and lift. Good, and then slowly bring that in without changing anything. Good, now left arm. Left arm slowly lengthen and lifts up at any angle. Any angle means it could be straight, could be V, it could be out to the side. You choose depending on the state of your shoulder health. And then find that. Good, now we're gonna do right arm. Right arm lengthens and lifts up to any angle, any degree, any angle that feels good for you. Check that your belly is still connected to your back and bring that in. Good, now left leg. <laughs> left leg lengthens and lifts up. Nothing else has changed. You're like a three-legged cat. Woo! Bring it down and in. Excellent. Shake out your wrists just in case you need it. And then we're gonna do uh, opposite arm and leg. So here we go. We think about right leg, left arm. Then we slide them out and we try to lift them together. We try to lift them at the exact same height. Good, and we pause, pause, pause. And then we bring it in. Good. 
Now just find a diagonal. It's your right arm and left leg sliding out together and lifting together and reaching in opposition. You gotta find the diagonal in your torso to make that happen. Good, and then bring that in. We're gonna alternate opposite arm and leg. Bring that in. Good. And opposite arm and leg. Good. One more time each way. Good. And opposite arm and leg. Perfect. Okay, from here, come down onto your forearms. Lengthen one leg long and the other leg long. Drop your pelvis down so it's flat. We're gonna do just a 20 second core hover. So it's 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 17, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Thighs come down, melt all the way down. Great. We've got one exercise here prone today on our bellies. So find yourself within the confines of your mat. Stretch your arms up and your legs a little bit apart. Maybe the legs are as wide as the mat, maybe they're a little bit less, but make sure that feels comfortable for you and that your body is a giant X. Good, so you wanna pull your joints in. So as I'm stretching out, I'm pulling my humeral head in. As I'm lengthening my legs out, I'm pulling the very top of my femur head in. So it's weird, I'm reaching out and in at the same time. My belly's pulling away from the floor. So here we go. Lengthen everything and pull everything in and lift an inch off the ground. It's tiny, teeny, tiny. You're just finding your form. Good. And then come down. Now we're gonna do the diagonals from this position. I wanna start with right leg, left arm. Right leg, left arm lengthen, and they lift up at the exact same time, same height if possible, and then down. Good, now there's a little scooping action. You lengthen and there's a little scooping action that happens as you lift. So right arm and left leg, find the diagonal and down. Opposite arm and leg, reach. And lower. Good. Keep going. Reach. It's a scoop and lift. And down. Good. Again, reach and lift. Find that diagonal. Find the connection of middle finger and middle toe. Can you find that? And down. It goes right through your belly button. Nice. Then slide hands to shoulders. Smoothly press yourself back to prayer position. Arms forward, forehead on the ground. Stretch your back. <sighs> Gonna take a couple breaths. <sighs> Perfect, that was nice. Now coming onto our sides, we're gonna zip out a couple of Giant clams, yay! So we're in our L shape. We find length through both parts of our L. And then we're gonna lift up the feet. Then we're gonna lift up the top leg. We're gonna find a connection, maybe through the sides of the feet, maybe through the heels. You choose here. And this top leg is open as wide as you can. The bottom leg is also open as wide as you can. And just holding this position is a little bit of work. Okay, so finding that. 
checking that your pelvis is completely forward and stable. And then it's close and open. Exhale, close, inhale, open. Good, we're giant clams under the ocean. I guess there's some nuclear bombs being dropped off the coast of North Korea. Every time I read about the missiles and the nuclear warheads going off anywhere in the ocean, I get really freaked out for all the whales and all the fish. It's just so wrong. Anyway, I'm not gonna think about that right this second, but just so you know, don't do that. <laughs> It's wrong. I think a four-year-old would get that. Like, do you drop nuclear warheads near whales? No, of course not. Gosh, why can't a four-year-old run the presidency or run the world? Although we were talking about that. We are having dinner and the kids were standing on their heads and, and rolling around in somersaults. And we were laughing so hard saying, what if four-year-olds and two-year-olds ran the country? And we would say, oh, well, everyone would have recess all the time. And you'd be standing on our heads during meetings. <laughs> and it would be pretty funny. <laughs> That's funny. But I'm telling you, kids are smart. I know you know that. But they are. I was telling uh, James, the four-year-old, that uh, it's OK to eat worms in apples, because I happen to eat a worm in an apple. And he said, no, that's disgusting. And I said, well, you eat pigs. And he thought about it and he goes, yeah, but they're cooked. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty smart. Good, open and close. Good, now for the second half, I'm gonna bring the pace up a little bit just to get it over with nine and eight and seven and six and five and four and three, and two, last one, and we did it, good. I make a little fist and beat out just along the side of my leg to my glute and back down. So it's that little IT band, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, giving it a little bit of love. Yeah, I roll onto my back. I'm gonna take the number four stretch here, leg that I just worked crosses over, excellent. For me, I need a little bit more, so I pull the whole stretch into my body till I find something nice. And we're gonna do crunches in this position for 10, and then we'll move to the other side. So my hands come behind my head for support. Take a giant breath in, and then I think about the unicorn horn lifting up and over to that opposite knee. So I'm creating length. I lift up and down, nice, eight, and seven, and six, and five, and four, and three, and two, last one. <sighs> Yay, okay, shake out those legs, kick your butt a little bit, and then roll on up and around to the other side. Good. Ah. Okay, we've got our L shape here. We lift the feet open, and just take a minute to find kind of maximum external rotation in both legs. Check that your pelvis is stacked and really stable and then it's closed and open. First half is a little slow, second half is gonna go a little faster. So we just enjoy ourselves. Yes. Can you believe that it's almost October? October, I think it's Friday. October. Good. 2021. Does that freak you out when you really think about that it's 2021 or is it like eh, just a number, it doesn't matter. I think it's a little freaky. <laughs> but I was thinking 2022, that's really amazing. <laughs> Things, I amaze easily though. <laughs> ah, 
We went for a long beach walk when we got home yesterday. Don't you love to do that? You get out of the car and you can barely walk and you get to the beach and then you can walk for miles. You put your feet in the ocean. It feels so good. And we saw sea lions swimming along saying hello. There's little whiskers popping out. They're so much fun to, they often will kind of swim close to the shore near you. And then when you wave to them, they like pop out. I think that they, they enjoy that contact, but I don't know. Seems to me like they do. Okay, a couple more. You should see, speaking about ant, wild animals enjoying contact, um, you should see the amount of acorns we got for our squirrels. Whoa. In Mount Shasta area, there are black oaks, giant black oaks, and they make those big acorns. And the squirrels here come to our yard and they see these giant acorns and they look at us like, where the heck did you get these? And then they oh, you eat them. They're so excited <laughs> when they come back the next day for more. Okay, last 10, a little faster. 10 and 9 and 8 and 7. I feel these today. 6 and 5 and 4 and 3 and 2. Last one. Oh, yes. I'm making a little fist, and then for me, just tracing that line from glute to IT band, just along the side, is very helpful. Kind of loosening up a little bit in case it's tight, yeah. Then for our number four stretch into crunches, leg you just worked kicks up and across. <sighs> Good. Finding some kind of a stretch for yourself, you can keep your foot down, or maybe reeling it in is way better. You choose. Hands are going to come to support your head. Good. And then we lift up and over. Good. Legs come toward us, so it is definite flexion. We flex our spine up and down. Good. And it's four and five. And six and seven and eight and nine. Last one. Ah, oh, oh, beautiful work today. That felt really good. We're going to finish our class with a couple of circles. So find your band. And load up a leg. My right foot is going to start first. But you can do which, whichever leg you want. Pull it down. Ah. And then you can keep your opposite leg bent or long, just depending on what, what you're needing today. And before we start the circles, you want to find your contrast. You push up into the band with your right foot, and then your right femur head. You really feel like your, your bone is sinking down. And if you can't, for whatever reason today, imagine or feel it, can you feel your right sitting bone or your right butt cheek pressing down in contrast? That would be great. Then take it across the body and up and around, circling the leg in the socket. Good. Inhale, exhale. See if you can do five or six and then reversing circular movement. Good, I'm gonna reverse. Yes, it feels so good. Ah, I'm so glad that you are here in class with me. It makes me so happy to see you all. And we're staying healthy together, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool group of people. Yes. Okay, give it a nice little tug. And then let's change and finish in class here with the leg circle on the other side for me, my left. I find the contrast. I push up and pull down. Ah, good. And then it goes into the circular movement. Ooh. Inhaling and exhaling. Good. Ah. Oh. 
Oh yeah. Good. And reverse. Oh, I can smell my Mexican fiesta lunch that I started in the crock pot, in the slow cooker today. I'm making the cranberry beans, Joan. I love those beans. You were the one that introduced me to those, the Napa Valley beans. What are they called? The name is escaping me, but they're the best beans. Uh, El Gordo. Ah, oh, Rancho El Gordo, Rancho Gordo, Gordo. Anyway. I'm so excited, so I make those beans. I simmer them in uh, onion, celery, carrot, and fresh tomatoes for about five, six hours. And then I'm making Mexican rice, and I have squash and fresh pepper. Um, what do you call those things? <laughs> that you roll up in uh, corn, corn flour, and you wrap with corn husks. Okay, I think you know what I'm saying. Sometimes when I'm really into my class, I can't remember words anymore. That's okay. It's okay. Anyway, Mexican fiesta for lunch. Yay. So you're pulling towards you, and you got a great class in. Yes, and if you live nearby, you might need to come over for lunch. <laughs> you know there's going to be plenty. That was really fun, people. I'm so happy. Okay, so we can unmute everyone and say goodbye. Yeah.